We're back here on Serralo Sports Talk and joining the show. He was the NFL MVP in the year 2000, Super Bowl 34 champion, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and the biggest snub in the history of the Heisman Trophy, Marshall Falk. Marshall, thanks so much for joining the show. Thanks for having me, man. How's it going? It's going great. Obviously, it's a, it's a much different world than the last time we spoke down in Miami last year. Yeah, oh. man, it is, right? Like, er everything's virtual, and, and, and this is us right now. Hey, you know what? We're, we're rolling with the punches, and we're doing the best we can. You know, Marshall, I know last year when I had you on, we talked at length about the whole Heisman debacle. Has Gino returned the trophy to its rightful owner yet? Uh, I need to know. Uh, <laughs> Gino can have that trophy, man. I'm, 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 <laughs> Gino and I, we've come to the conclusion that that was the best thing for him and the best thing for me. It was probably his highest moment um, in, in sports. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a driving moment for me. So I think we're good. I think we're good. I'd say you made out all right. I mean, all those accolades I listed introducing you, you had quite the accomplished <laughs> career. And look, there's so much to get to, right? Super Bowl 55, your incredible work with Drug Free World. But I want to start with your Rams making headlines in the past 72 hours. Right? What does that addition of Matthew Stafford to Los Angeles do to the franchise? Okay, I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure out the same thing, Joe, because, <laughs> um, man, I, as everyone else is, I am like high on the talent of Matthew Stafford, but for some reason, you know, I just I, I look at the Detroit Lions and the team, and I'm just gonna, it, it's like, should I, should I blame it all on Detroit? Like, does everything in Detroit, <laughs> football wise, just go bad, or, you know, how much of it was Stafford's fault? It's hard to really judge, but I think I think what he's asking for it was similar to what I asked for, which is a clean slate. Mm -hmm. So he gets to go go to the Rams, um, a, a real innovative play caller and Sean McVay um, last year with with, uh, with Brandon Staley, a stingy defense. Yeah, man, I mean he 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 has some things working for him uh, to really help propel him to what the talent should be, or it's going to expose some other things. That's very true. And, you know, uh, it, this can shake out similarly to when you left the Colts for the Rams. Yeah. And, of course, you had a lot to prove. And, you know, you let your play do the talking. How much did this remind you of your own situation when you saw that Stafford wanted out? Oh, man, it's, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very similar. And, and I, you know, you, you get a new coach, you, some things are different, and you just want a fresh start. And I think that, you know, he, he – he hung in there and, and listen, they paid him handsomely. I mean, he, he <laughs> oh my God, he, <laughs> he, he got money bags while he was there. But, um, but now it's about winning for him. It's about legacy. And it'll be interesting to see because they're going to need that position to maybe not make the mega money just so they can continue to put pieces around, kind of like what Tom Brady is doing. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. We'll see if us, uh, if Stafford and his um, his people are willing to play ball, so they can so they can put pieces around him to win. Now, Marshall, I, I want to shift over to your incredible career. Of course, you talk about the Heisman earlier and how that was a driving factor for all of your success in the NFL. Coming out of high school, you were recruited by several top notch programs, but not as a running back, as a cornerback. How much yeah. was that motivation for you to go out there at San Diego State and show everyone you could run the, uh, run the damn ball? I'll be honest, man. It wasn't really – I didn't look at it as that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was um, I was a, a, a young kid. I didn't know any better. I just knew I had more fun when I had the ball in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I wanted to do. I, I wanted to – I wanted to who, – who has to – who runs more with the ball? The running back. Cool. Well, now, now that's turning into the quarterback, but – but at that point in time, it was it was all running back for me, and that's that's what I enjoyed. So, so I didn't really um, I didn't really think much of it. I just kind of um, just just took it and ran with it. I didn't I didn't give it much thought. And what happened on that recruiting trip to Nebraska, the famous recruiting trip of yours, that pretty much seemed to solidify that you were going to be an Aztec? Oh man, it was just that that, that was the coldest cold I'd ever seen. In Nebraska, they, they do a really good job at guys from the South. They come to Nebraska. They don't really let you go outside. They grab you from like the, the, the terminal and you don't really get to 
touch outside and it's 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 january and then they bring you into this carport into the hotel and then they pull inside the buildings to where you don't really man i left the hotel and walked around a corner and felt that i I felt that cold and looked up on the clock and it said like eight degrees. <laughs> Hell no, nah. nah. This is from a boy, a southern boy from New Orleans who never even had a winter coat. That was way too much. Amazing. Uh, you know, Marshall, you are undoubtedly the best dual threat running back of all time. I mean, the only player in NFL history with 6,000 yards on the ground and in the air. First player to accumulate 2,000 yards from scrimmage in four straight seasons. What do you think when you look at today's game, guys like Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, one guy who's playing in this game, maybe a little past his prime and Le'Veon Bell and how these guys have contributed in both facets of the offense. What do you make of the direction the game's gone in? Well, it's, it's, um, I think it's taken away the notion of the running back not being able to catch the ball, which mm -hmm. is now it's part of a requirement. Guys that are coming into the league they, they are looking at the position and they're playing the position at a high level, doing all the things that's necessary to just that, that that's incorporated into playing football. Like yeah. when you think about it, it's okay. We're, we're playing football. That, that's what you do when you play football. The, the genesis of the game starts with someone throwing and someone catching, and then that person returning the ball back by throwing and the other person catching. So how could you all of a sudden get to the, to, to the NFL and, oh, I can't catch. So now that part of the game and what they're asking the running back to do is, you know, be full service, play every down. And if you, if you can't, they'll platoon some guys, but to, 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 to run inside, run outside, uh, be able to catch the ball, pass block. It's, it's a part of, of what a running back is, is asked to do now. It's the norm. And, and, you know, kind of circling back to your Rams, a guy who in recent years, has been able to do it all for them. Of course, no longer with the team. Todd Gurley, how much of Jared Goff's success earlier in his career do you credit to Gurley and his presence both in the passing game, enabling play action, and things of that sort? Well, when you're a young quarterback, you need an attention getter. You need like a shiny object to make people kind of um, uh, put focus the attention on you. And Todd Gurley took a, took a lot of weight and a lot of pressure off of off of Jared Goff I and. Mean, you know, it was um, it was it was Todd, and if if you think about the couple of years that he had with Jared, that really propelled the play action and what they were doing under McVay, and 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 it it, it helped Jared to kind of get his sea legs underneath him. Um, but he, Todd, right now, you know, I, I think he was on the one year deal in, in Atlanta. I'll see where he's going to land. Um, is, uh, is, is is right now in that position of what do I do? Where do I go? And how do I become the back I once was if he can? That's if he's 100%. That's what we do not know. Yeah, and we certainly hope, you know, running backs don't have the longest shelf life to, to play, what, no. 12 years like you did it is remarkable nowadays. You know, Marshall, we're here for Super Bowl 55, and you've played in a couple of these games yourself. What's the key, all the hype, all the media attention, what's the key to staying locked in? ahead of the biggest game of your life? Uh, just giving it the attention and the detail uh, mm -hmm. and being focused on, on the small things as this game starts to ostracize and become what it is. And the person who can figure out how to focus and deal with family life and deal with all the other stuff along with the game. And, and um, everybody tries to tell you, don't make it a big deal, but it's a big deal. Like yeah. it's a big deal. You cannot not make it a big deal. So. You deal with it. You deal with it and you make the best of it. That's what you do. He he who makes the best of this and, and, and enjoys it the most and makes sure that they pay attention to detail and they understand, and this is huge, they understand that it's just a game, but this is a big game. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go out and perform. Absolutely, Marshall. Now, look, you're here with an incredible cause, with Drug Free World, and, you know, I need to know, as a kid who grew up in the Desire Projects down in New Orleans, yeah. one of the toughest projects in the country before it was demolished some years back, what does your work and being able to give back now with Drug Free World mean to you? 
Well, it's for me, it's um, it's giving them the resources that I didn't have, the resources that a lot of places don't have, which is just education and information about what decision that you are going to make. A lot of the kids today, they listen, they'll hop on their cell phone and they'll Google anything. But when it comes to something like drugs, they'll just experience something with a friend telling them, hey, try this. Yeah. And we just want to educate people so they understand. And once you have that knowledge and you're making a good decision, I believe that when you read about it and you understand the statistics of it and what happens and the inroads to how it has derailed so many lives, you make the better decision. Now, it doesn't stop there with us because we continue to educate, um, whether it's teachers by providing uh, uh, kits that we have for educational kits for, for teachers or even parents, giving them a resource and where to go. If you didn't grow up around drugs, you may miss the signs that your kid has a problem. And where do you go to get that education? Well, drugfreeworld.org is where you go. We provide it. We have it in 20 different languages. And, you know, I just look at it like this. Everybody has an option. Everybody has a choice in this world. As long as you make, make an educated decision, you're going to make the better decision. Marshall, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. And it, it's incredibly important that you make parents and teachers alike cognizant of what's going on with the youth. It, it's incredible work and I appreciate what you're doing. Look, before I let you go, you've played against Tom Brady in this game almost 20 years ago. What did you notice back then that's still evident, if not better about his game now? Um, just how poised and how ready for the moment he is. Mm-hmm. Even even back then, he was ready for the moment. Um, I watched him against Green Bay. He was ready for the moment, and um, you know, you just that, that that's just something that you have. You either have it or you don't, and he has it. Yeah, he absolutely does. You know, when you played him in that Super Bowl some 19 years ago, you went through Andy Reid to get to Tom Brady. Had the yeah, game of your yeah. career against Andy yeah. Reid's Eagles. What got into you that game? Oh, nothing, man. It was just a, it was, a, it was a need to, to, you know, they, um, the way they were playing, they, they, uh, they dared us to run the football. And so when Mike Martz made that decision, like, Hey, we came out of halftime. He said, listen, we're going to run the ball. I just buckled it up. <laughs> you don't turn as a running back. You don't turn that down when the, when the coach say, Hey, we're going to run the ball this half. It's like, I think I put my chin strap on in a locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, this week it's Tom Brady versus Andy Reid. You know them both well. How do you see Super Bowl 55 unfolding, Marshall? Um, man, I, I, I just always, I don't know why, because, you know, you, you take Tom Brady's age and you're like, oh, no, nah, there's no way. This dude's playing in another Super Bowl, win another Super Bowl. And as fantastic as the Kansas City Chiefs are, you know, it's hard to go against Tom Brady, but I just... I just wonder, can Tampa defense pull it off again? How much man can they play against Kansas City and bring pressure? Like, you have to make a decision against Mahomes. Mm -hmm. And, man, I'm, I'm just going to go with Kansas City here. I think it's going to be a bomb burner. I think the spread is like three. I think 35-30. Okay. I think Tom will have a chance to drive him down at the end. Well, it seems almost every Super Bowl Tom's in, it does come down to that. You look at those Giants games, he had chances at the end. It's it's whether or not the defense breaks at that point. Yep, that's that's how I see it. And I can't believe I'm going against Tom Brady again. <laughs> Marshall, that might make two of us. We'll see my picks coming out later in the week. But I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining the show. All right, man. Take care. We'll be right back here on Sorallo Sports Talk. <laughs> 